Greetings, white positive brothers and sisters. Um, <clears throat> on December 26th, uh, day after Christmas, uh, Blue Ninja here, one of many apostles for white well-being with all of you as usual. Um, <clears throat> hope everybody had a good Christmas and uh, is still going to enjoy it. Uh, even afterwards, we're going to continue with that Christmas spirit, of course, in our Western hearts and bio spirits. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I'm still in uh, East, Eastern, East LA, <laughs> Southern Cal at this hotel. I'm getting ready to check out of here. Um, wanted to make this video before I did. Um, I've been having trouble doing it. Uh, because my phone is really running out of memory and uh, I couldn't get it recorded on my phone. I'm working on backing up some of the stuff uh, on it so I can free up some, some space. But uh, just finally had the brilliant idea of using my tablet. So this is the first video on the tablet, a little bit bigger. Um, Looks a little bit different to me, but probably not to you. Anyhow, um, might be better to do it like this anyway. Um, and uh, so, <clears throat> on to the meat of the matter here. I'm going to have to uh, get to the point quick here because I don't have much time. Um, but uh, I really wanted to make this video before I left here. I tried last night. Again, had memory problems with my phone. Um, and uh, so, <clears throat> uh, basically what I wanted to just cover real quick um, is my activism yesterday on Christmas Day. No white guilt. I wore this to Denny's. To have a, a turkey dinner, Christmas dinner, uh, turkey Christmas dinner, um, and uh, which was good. <laughs> uh, but uh, I saw a white family, a small white family, a, a couple, and their young daughter. So I was talking to them about this. So I just wanted to share about that real quick, and um, and then also two other things that I was thinking about insight wise as far as dealing with anti-whiteism, dealing with things in the anti-white narrative. You know, it's interesting to always think about things, I think, that they might say to us, anti-whites, and think about how do we counter that, you know. So I was just thinking about some things that are very prevalent in the anti-white narrative. How do we really counter that? Probably nothing new. You know, a lot of us are probably aware of this stuff, but just thinking more about it. <clears throat> You know, just like stuff, you know, what Jason talks about. Um, but uh, we all got to share insights. That's what we have to do. You know, any insights that any of us get, we got to share, you know, that, you know, to try to sharpen ourselves, you know, to make, to fine tune how we deal with anti-whites more effectively and to help our people. Of course, that's our goal. We're rebuilding ourselves as a race, as a white race. And as a people, Western kind, and we are also having to fend off the anti-whiteism as we do it, because as we know, we have a lot of intense opposition. So it's twofold. As we grow, we have to be able to uh, deal with the, the anti-white opposition so that it doesn't hinder our growth. That's the idea. Uh, keep that at bay and keep ourselves rebuilding and strengthening <clears throat> and healing. Um, so, uh, and then <laughs> a couple things from the Bible I wanted to share here. That's why I wanted to do this from the hotel. So I got the good book itself with me. Um, sometimes every now and then I'll randomly, um, the camera angle is just the best I can get it right now. Otherwise it'll fall, <laughs> um, squat down a little bit, but, uh, Sometimes, randomly at hotels, I open up the good book and uh, just randomly see what, see what, you know, where it takes me. It took me to Proverbs 29. So we're going to 
make this a white positive sermon from one of your white apostles, Blue Ninja style, uh, a white well-being sermon here, straight up, with the Bible itself, Proverbs 29. And surprisingly, there's some verses that I think are really applicable to white well-being, oddly enough, um, or just, you know, fittingly enough. So, those things, the Bible, I'll share some verses there from Proverbs 29, if anyone wants to check it out. Um, we'll do this church style. I've always kind of had a dream of being a preacher, a, li a little dream, like a, just something I've thought about that I think I could, I think I could be a preacher pretty well. You know, motivate, encourage with the spiritual angle on things, you know, the Christian angle, in my case. Uh, I've always kind of, kind of wanted to do that. So maybe this is my chance. Um, so welcome to church, the church for white well-being here. Um, so the Bible verses, the two insights I was thinking about in the little, my uh, activism experience yesterday. Um, and before I forget, Irish ice, Irish ice. I want to mention you, my brother. I forgot you're indeed right. I forgot to mention you on the honors roll call as I was going through our army for white well-being here. Um, and I knew I was forgetting people. And, uh, of course, there's, there's too many to name. But um, it was after I had that anti-white encounter at that truck stop in Phoenix, Arizona. And I was so pumped up total victory there and I was naming people that are all ready and willing to fight for our people stand up for white well-being and uh, I knew I was forgetting a big one Irish ice and of course we're all giants in the white positive sphere here but um, I was naming off people and uh, Wilhelmina Bayer and Matthew Bayer um, 41 BMC, Brad C, Raymond Foster, Donning Armour, Art Acrobat, Nancy Drew, No White Guilt Trip, Shauna Shaw, um, Watch Rider, and uh, I knew there was a big one I was forgetting that is absolutely ironclad with the Western Biospheres uh, in its full glory, and that is the one and only Irish Ice. And uh, sorry that I forgot to mention you, my man. I'm going to make sure to get that here, give you the honor that you deserve. Um, <clears throat> Irish Ice, my brother, I love you dearly. And I respect and admire you dearly. Because Irish Ice, um, like a lot of us know, he does it similar to me. He's an in real life kind of guy like I am. So Irish Ice is, is doing this stuff all the time, and uh, whether he puts it on camera or not, a lot of it I'm sure he doesn't. So Irish Ice is doing exactly what I'm doing, real life, battling those anti-whites, just like at that truck stop. Um, Irish Ice is doing it real time, real life, all the time, standing up for our people, defending us against anti-whites, reaching with love and positivity, our white brothers and sisters. Irish Ice, absolute hero. I give you my total, um, all my honor and respect, admiration, love, and gratitude uh, to you, my good brother, my good friend, Irish Ice. Um, thank you for reminding me to mention you because uh, as I say, I love you dearly, brother. You are you're a big one in our sphere, and you're doing really good stuff. And I love your style, of course. Real life hero puts it on his sleeve like a true Irishman. Um, up in the northern parts of uh, well, he's in Canada, so there's the ice. I presume um, <clears throat> knows what the cold weather is like, but. Uh, Got that fire for white well-being, keeping him warm deep down in his heart, and it is burning bright. So Irish ice, 
I cannot say enough about you, my brother. Um, I give you my deepest and most sincere commendations and uh, love and appreciation. So really appreciate, uh, honor, and thank you for what you're doing. Keep it up, brother. Absolutely. We are on fire. We are all saving our kind. We are doing it with strength. So um, much love and respect and appreciation to the great Irish eyes. Um, <clears throat> love you, brother. Can't talk about you enough. So, um, um, and on that note, uh, talking about stuff that he does, stuff that I do, stuff that a lot of us do, the activism yesterday, Christmas Day, a great day for white positive activism, right? I made two videos yesterday. This was going to be the third. One was a Merry Christmas kind of thing. The other one was a uh, one where I was walking back to Denny's. And um, anyhow, so picking up from there, I get back to the Denny's, having a little nice uh, Christmas turkey dinner outside, eating outside. And uh, it's all non whites in these parts. And then a white family comes and sits down, you know, as close as they can to me couple tables over and I thought oh wow that's cool it's always a treat to see whites in Southern Cal uh, so Cal folks uh, will know this um, <clears throat> you know so it's just like oh wow you know it's a rare occurrence these days is to see whites in these parts so I see this white family Christmas Day at Danny's it's a couple husband wife and their young young daughter probably seven years old or something and I'm thinking, wow, that's great, whites. And so I'm just kind of start thinking about, hmm, could I, you know, is there any way I could say something to them? Or I wanted to have them see this message. I wanted to have the little girl see this message. I wanted to just make it known to them. When I see whites, especially white kids, I want to just put this right, you know, front and center so they can see it. <clears throat> and um, so I'm just thinking, yeah, I want to just... You know, when I'm walking out or something, I'm going to just kind of really make it visible to them. And I'm thinking about maybe I could say something to them. And I'm, I'm sitting there thinking about it. And then I'm thinking, yeah, you know what? They're, they're right there. I think I'm just going to wish them a Merry Christmas. And, uh, and then ask them what they think of, of my shirt. As friendly as can be. So I was going to do that, you know, just as I was walking out, you know, not uh, disturb their dinner or anything. And, uh, but they ended up leaving before me. So they were getting up to leave. And, uh, I was like, oh, hey, wait a minute, you're leaving. Uh, let me just say Merry Christmas to you folks. And I just wanted to ask you, um, what do you think of my shirt? <laughs> you know, as friendly as can be. And, uh, they said, this is interesting. They just, they just said, it makes sense. It makes sense. And um, <clears throat> so immediately got it. Immediately we're on board with it. The, the husband and the wife both said that. Yeah, makes sense. You know, right on. And, uh, but they focused on the no guilt. No guilt. They left the white. They didn't talk about the white part. No, they saw it. We know they saw it, but... They didn't talk about, a lot of whites don't want to talk about that. They don't want to talk about explicitly white positive stuff. You know, so they were just talking about, you know, they said no guilt. Oh, that's a good thing. No guilt. You know, I, nobody should have guilt and you know, guilt's a bad thing. They had an older daughter. They said 19 years old who struggled with guilt, probably white guilt. And they said she struggled with guilt and, you know, that, you know, so I just let them say that. Didn't, didn't, I just said, okay, cool, I appreciate that, you know, and, uh, and then the, the, the woman took her daughter into the rest, restaurant to go to the restroom real quick, <laughs> kind of just scurried away, and a lot of whites get uncomfortable with, with a specifically white positive message, even if they agree with it, they don't want to really talk about it themselves necessarily, the guy just kind of, after that they went into the restaurant, he just kind of said, yeah, you know, that's, good message and 
and uh, daughter struggled with it, and so, you know, it's, it's a good message. Uh, nobody should have guilt. And I just said, okay, cool, you know, thank you. And, and he left. <laughs> and I just let him go. Then, on the way out, the, the mother and her daughter came out, and uh, as, as they were leaving, she says, um, the mother, she says, uh, again, you know, great message, you know, nobody should have guilt. And at that point, you know, she kind of was just like, no guilt. And I said, yes. And I said, the key, though, is no guilt for white people. No guilt for white people. That's the key. So I had to point that out. They were taking it as all they wanted to talk about was the no guilt part. And it's easy to talk about that. But no white guilt. That's the tough part. That's what needs to happen. So I said, it's no guilt for white people. Man, that's the key. And she just walked away after that. So it shows that a lot of people, you know, they're happy to talk about no guilt. That's great. But when you talk about no guilt for white people, they get a little bit squeamish. And that is all because of the programming in society. That's the way they program people to be. So, um, typical. Um, and uh, they don't want to specifically talk about the white part of it. Um, but that's what we're doing. And that's what I did. And I said, for white people, no guilt. That's the key. She didn't respond to that. She just heard me, left. And, uh, and it was all good. Um, so... I got the message to them, they saw this, they were on board, they didn't want to talk about the white part of it, that's typical for whites, most whites, um, but uh, I was there to do that, and that's what we all do, so this is no guilt for white people. So, got that message to them, and, that, and as I said to her, that is the whole key for white people, specifically white positive. So... Hopefully they think about it, take it in, maybe tell their 19-year-old daughter who's been struggling with guilt, probably white guilt. Maybe they tell her about, hey, we saw this guy at Denny's today with a shirt on that says no white guilt, and probably talk about it in private, you know, the full message. And uh, hopefully they share it with her, you know, and say, yeah, that was a cool message, no white guilt. And then hopefully they just take it in themselves, share it with their kids, family, friends. Hopefully they look this up online. No white guilt. Get plugged into our, to the white positive community. Don't know what's going to happen, but it's possible. That type of thing, you know, they're just like, cool. They like it. They, they don't really want to say stuff about it. A little bit uneasy. But they're still getting it. And maybe they just need to do it, you know, in private. And a lot of people are like that. They're just, you know, they're... I'm not going to just start speaking stuff out in public right away. They're just cool. They'll probably, hopefully, do it in private and look more into it. So that's the hope. Got the message to them specifically. And we see, again, how whites are very hesitant to stand up and say, white and proud, white and no guilt. That is the hard thing to do, and that is the key, though. It has been made hard to do totally on purpose by the anti-whites. They've made it very difficult on purpose because that's, that is what they want to avoid. That is what they do not want to happen. The anti-whites do not want white people saying, I'm white and I'm proud. I'm proud as a white. Proud for being white. Not just as a human being, as a white person. As a white person, I do not have guilt. you got to break that shell wide open. It's a big taboo. It's a big, you know, it's been done that way on purpose, but how do we break it? We just got to break it open. The best way I do it, so just crack that, just break it wide open. And, uh, you know, break the ice, so to speak, on this. We got to just get it out there. Um, so, positive story there. Um, then on the way back, I was thinking about some of the things in the anti-white narrative. Uh, Number one, white privilege. Number two, marginalized people, which, of course, they mean non-whites. And I heard this on TV. There was a forum. It was CNN. They had a whole discussion on race and racism. Now, racism is a problem. What does that mean? White people are a problem. 
And they say racism is a problem that we have to get rid of. It means white people are a problem to them that they have to get rid of. So they have all these big discussions on big channels, CNN. It's unbelievable. So I heard them talking about you know people of color, marginalized communities, anti-white narrative. So those two things, how they refer in the anti-white narrative, a lot of times they'll refer to non-white as <clears throat> marginalized. You know, they're marginalized. They are oppressed. And the whites, they're just privileged. So the whites are always privileged, have the upper hand just for being white. And the non-whites are always on the down just for being non-whites. That's the anti-white narrative. So how do we handle that? Now, a lot of us probably know how to handle it, um, but I was thinking about it. Somebody says white privilege. You know, yeah, there is, they, they think there's white privilege, or they think you're privileged for being a white. What do you say to that? How do you respond? This is how I think you should respond. You just say, no, that's false. That's the anti-white narrative. That is false. It's just the anti-white narrative. And I don't think we need to go any farther than that. You do not argue against it. You do not argue against it, like Jason said. Because as soon as you argue against it, you sort of um, are implying that it's true. Those anti-whites are very clever like that. They get you to admit that without even realizing it. So if somebody says, hey, white man, you, you got privilege. You got white privilege. White man or woman. Do you say, no, I don't. I, I grew up with a really tough life, you know, poor, I had a scrap for everything I got. Do you say stuff like that? Do you try to defend yourself? Um, saying, no, you don't have white privilege and try to give all the reasons why. No, you don't do any of that. You do not try to defend, you do not try to say, no, I don't have white privilege and here's the reasons why, because that's not what they're interested in. All you do, it's an anti-white statement, pure and simple. You say, that is false, that is the anti-white narrative. That's it. So indirectly, you're calling them anti-white. They're speaking the anti-white narrative. If they persist more on that, you can call them anti-white. Uh, you're saying, I have white privilege, that's false, that is the anti-white narrative. That's all that is. It's just a narrative, it's false, it's anti-white. Done. They want to come, if they want to back off, okay. If they want to come at you more and harder, you say, you're anti-white. You're just anti-white. And that's where all that white privilege talk is coming from. So that's why you're spouting off the anti-white narrative. Anti-white. If someone didn't doesn't realize it, wants to back off, you loosen up and say, now you know, that's the anti-white narrative. Go free from it. Serve white well-being. Go to nowhiteguilt.org. But if they're a vehement anti-white and they want to stick to it, you say you're anti-white. See you later. The other thing they say is <clears throat> marginalized people. They're talking about non-whites, of course. Now, so when they say, look, these people are mar marginalized. They're marginalized people. I think the way, if, if, if anybody uses that term, marginalized people, I think the way we respond to that is, you know, you, you could try to say, there's a lot of things you could try to say, but I think the way you respond to it is you just say, you don't, I don't think you really get into the, to the details on that. You just say, um, marginalized. Um, you, you don't even ask them to explain it. You don't get into a back and forth about them trying to justify that they're marginalized and you saying they're not. And this and that. You don't get into that. Again, you just say marginalized. Um, uh, you just say that's the anti-white narrative. You can say no, it's not really true, but you don't even have to say that. Somebody wants to talk about marginalized people, you can say, oh, you mean non-whites? That's just the anti-white narrative. Uh, you're talking about non-whites using a term in the anti-white narrative, marginalized people. You want to talk about marginalized people? Okay, I know you, you really mean non-white people, and that term marginalized is just the anti-white narrative. 
that's that's just a term in the anti-white narrative. You are just that's just anti-white narrative, and it's false. Again, that's what you say to those things. They want to say white privilege. That's the anti-white narrative. It's false. They want to say marginalized people. That's just I know you're talking about non-whites. That's just the anti-white narrative. It's false. If they say, "Oh, didn't realize that," then leave it alone. Maybe they can go free. If they stick to their guns, go even harder. Well, you're anti-white. You can see that now. That's why you're using these terms in the anti-white narrative. So white privilege, marginalized people, when they're trying to say white people are privileged, non-whites, whatever, whatever euphemism they want to use, are marginalized. You just say, you don't defend it, you don't talk about it, you just say, that's just the anti-white narrative. It's just the anti-white narrative that you're speaking right now. Point that out. They could say, oh, interesting, what's that all about? If they're open-minded, you can explain it to them. If they're anti-white and they come back with more anti-white, you're just anti-white. Anti-white narrative, you're anti-white. That's how we handle those things. So I'm running out of time here. Got to get to uh, the good book, the Holy Bible itself. So wanted to make this longer, but I'm um, going to have to wrap it up. Um, so here's a verse. Proverbs 29, 8. Scoffers set a city aflame, but wise men turn away wrath. Kind of sounds like the anti-white riots, setting cities aflame. We, the wise, turn away the wrath. Here's one. If a wise man contends with a foolish man, whether the fool rages or laughs, there is no peace. That's what I'm talking about here. Arguing with an anti-white inside the anti-white narrative is foolish. There is no peace. If a wise man, we, the going free, contends with a foolish man, the anti-white, whether the fool rages or laughs, doesn't matter what their demeanor is, there is no peace. You cannot contend with a fool. So how do we not contend with them and still win? We just point out it's the anti-white narrative. They're anti-white. That's how they want to be. Here's the real kicker. The bloodthirsty hate the blameless, but the upright seek his well-being. How awesome is that? The bloodthirsty anti-whites hate the blameless, the white victims, the innocent, but the upright those of us serving white well-being, the white positive, seek his and our well-being as what's in common. I wanted to do more on this. I'm going to have to leave it at that because I've totally run out of time here. Um, and the last thing I'll say is... Um, Close out here. The fear of man brings a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe. The fear of man. Do not fear man out there. Do not fear the anti-white. It brings a snare to you. It will trip you up. Trust in the Lord, and you will be safe. Right here. Proverbs 29, 25, verse 25. And the one after that. Many seek the ruler's favor, but justice for man comes from the Lord. And we know the rulers of the West are anti-white. Do not seek their favor. Do not seek our enemies, our victimizers, rulers' favor. Justice comes from the Lord. True justice comes from the Lord himself. Justice for man comes from the Lord. And lastly, last verse in Proverbs 29, 27. An unjust man is an abomination to the righteous. That's the anti-whites. The anti-whites are an abomination to us, the righteous, white positive. And he who is upright in the way, us, white positive, 
are an abomination to the wicked. They are an abomination to us, the anti-whites, and we, the white positive, the righteous, the righteous are an abomination to them because their ways are wicked as anti-whites are ways are righteous that's why positive guided by the Lord of course with grace and mercy we all need it none of us are perfect but we recognize the right way we recognize the Lord God we recognize white positivity white well-being is the way to go going free of anti-whiteism is the way to go so I'll leave it there. I will see you all soon. Um, <clears throat> keep that Christmas cheer, that Christmas spirit, the Western bio spirit strong inside of you, the spirit of the Lord. And um, again, I'll see you all real soon. No white yoke ever. Stay white positive. Stay strong. I love you all. God bless each and every one. Let's keep going free.